Yo, it's still Monday, July 26th, 2021. My name is Alex. It's the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. And, uh... (laughs) Frankly, I just wanted to come back and riff for a little bit about what I was talking about earlier. And, uh, that was about, uh... That was about killing with kindness. Killing with kindness. So this would be like a, I guess a second installment to that. Where uh, killing with kindness is probably the best option. It's always, I, I feel like it's, sometimes I feel like it's the only option really. But there's just different justifications for different people. Different people have different justifications. Their perspective might be skewed, might be corrupted. And uh, sometimes you just can't blame them. You just have to uh, approach them and confront them with the same demeanor, the same, uh, the same disposition. And that is just to be nice, just to be uh, kind, to do good onto them and, and kill them with kindness if you need to. <laughs> do right, do good. Even if that means eliminating the evil, or at least mitigating it, subverting the subverters, corrupting the corruptors. Now that implies, like I mentioned earlier, that you're familiar. That implies you being familiar with the process, familiar with the system. Why? Why? Because if you don't know what the fuck you're looking at how are you going to know how to address it that's all that means you have to you have to have been able to uh, you have to have handled the gun to know how to disassemble it right well I mean you first have to handle a gun to be able to disassemble it you have to know how to fire a gun to know what it feels like to shoot a gun. So if you don't if you don't know if you don't know dirt, if you've never done dirt, the moment dirt presents itself and you are inexperienced, you won't know what to do with it. It's as simple as that. Now I'm not saying you go out of your way and put yourself in positions that create an unreasonable amount of risk to yourself or to others, to your associates, your loved ones. But like I said earlier, you do enough right. You remain honorable. You keep your integrity intact. You value your dignity. And sooner or later, somebody will come through and try to put a price on it for you. Somebody will come through and try to uh, lure you away from the purity, the righteousness. It isn't hard to imagine. It isn't hard to imagine. I mentioned it earlier. It's like it's like hunting for it's like hunting for prey. Um, that. That is highly prized, highly, highly valued. Something like, uh, like an exotic piece of meat. I know earlier it was about virginity. And yeah, there are some, some creeps, some perverts who specifically hunt virgins. But, um, I mean, it could be with anything. You're... You're shopping for a really exotic or a rare firearm or a a blade or a car. Let's say a car. Now imagine yourself the owner of this car. The dignity, the integrity, the honor, the virtue that goes, that comes with the territory of being righteous. And you're going to get offers. You're going to get offers. And... You want to evaluate and assess the buyer as much as you want to evaluate their offer. 
because it could be a piece of shit buyer who is offering you double over market value but if you know they're just going to turn around and use this vehicle in a drive-by shooting and you'll never see the car ever again are you really going to let it go again that depends even further on context whether or not the whether or not the, the drive-by is justified again that depends on on what you're party to on what you're privy to and just how much uh how much dirt you're capable of taking on how much dirt you're capable of doing as you navigate your social relations as you navigate your social interactions you want to keep in mind that betrayal never comes from your enemies even those closest to you could turn you in those closest to you can drop a dime it's not that hard people get handsomely compensated for information especially when it deals with brown nosers and virtue signalers who will who will go above and beyond might even be the ones to pull might even be the ones who themselves pull the trigger in order to um get compensated get those extra brownie points get that extra ration of food or that extra ration of uh recreation time damn it sounds like i'm talking about prison <laughs> You'd be surprised. Though even those you thought who wouldn't become uh who wouldn't be informants might become informants. And again, that's always contextual. One can't ever know. You just have to prepare for the unexpected. Can't be surprised by surprises. We aren't in the business for surprises. people have to see it coming otherwise it's there's no thrill there's there's no thrill people have to see death coming for them especially when we're talking about executing on on a contract ending somebody's livelihood or or starting somebody's livelihood if we're going to prop somebody up and and uh fill the role of kingmaker they have to see it coming because if when you if and when you hit them with something unexpected things always go awry and then that's when you get um a lot of those last resort contingencies taking effect like um mysterious ailments and disappearances which is really sad to see it's really fucked up much rather see it coming so people know what they're getting into people know what they're agreeing into they could extend their hand in confidence and and execute their agreement be able to carry out every piece every obligation in their contract um Yeah, I'm 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 not a fan of surprises. I feel like being as open as possible is uh the best route as open as possible. Um that's not to say that there is some information that's kept private. Again, I don't because I don't take public money. I'm not the fucking government. I truly believe that the government shouldn't have any secrets. That's right. Not even nuclear secrets. None of that. in an ideal world, right? Shouldn't have any national security secrets. 
national security clearances in an ideal world, right? But in reality, we got clearances for clearances. That's just how it is in practice. In theory, though, in theory, if it's for the people, by the people, uh, we would already know what the fuck is going on. We would already be flying. It's fucking 2021. Unfortunately, a lot of that shit is kept under wraps until the right people are in the right places to be able to disclose them, uncover them, be able to uh, profit on them. And it's a really fucked up form of uh, capitalism, a really distorted, transtorted fucking perverted form of capitalism it's it's not pure it's not pure capitalism so you might say i'm a radical capitalist for that simple fact that um openness openness actually uh, enhances and incentivizes capitalism whereas secrecy stagnates it it stagnates innovation it's it stagnates it actually does stagnate the accumulation and uh, the increase of profit. And it only uh, it relegates it to a few individuals. And that's where uh, the robber barons come from, the oligarchs come from. It isn't from how smart they are. It's from how fucking stupid they are. They, they don't know what to do with the capital. <laughs> They, they only know how to they only know how to amass it how to hoard it they 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 don't fucking know how to invest it they aren't actually they aren't actually kingmakers they aren't actually farmers they aren't actually developers they wouldn't know what to do with the whole world if it was handed to them and still and still they they treat themselves like royalty because they can because they got two hands one to suck dick with and another to I don't know suck more dick with <laughs> shit keep in mind that uh by no means am I am I mad you know I'm going to let them do their thing just uh just know that the more you amass and the more you hoard and the more you pay to stay off of the radar, the more bright you glow. The more the more brightly you glow. And um it's gonna be motherfuckers like corporate cowboys who will make it their mission, make it their lives mission to put a contract on that ass. Now you see now I, I spoke vaguely, I spoke in, in, in general terms. But even these motherfuckers at the top know what a contract means. And a contract just means an investment. We're gonna have we're gonna have to persuade you to invest some of that capital you've hoarded, some of that capital you've extracted from the system. And um I might as well drop keywords now if AI's listening. They got machine learning after all. If the one percent really wants to uh, grow from just being the 1% and being accepted by the 99%. There, I mean, there are some who, uh, who <laughs> whose egos is so large that they couldn't give a fuck if, if they were accepted. But it matters. A lot of them do want to be accepted. Otherwise, they would have offed themselves a long time ago. Like, come on, fam. What kind of legacy, what kind of legend... What kind of history do you plan on leaving behind when your own children, your bloodline, is weak and defenseless? They've never been put through any challenge in life. A corporate cowboy comes by and clips the rose out of the family garden. <laughs> and it's their time. Yeah, I get. I get if you came up in the struggle, you came up in the street, and uh, the only mode of survival was was secrecy. But there comes a point 
when it stops being survival and it just becomes ineptitude the ineptitude to live the ineptitude to grow being incapable of living and unable to achieve shit holler at me you can follow the page on instagram that's incorporating underscore associates dot ia i think i said that right you can subscribe to the patreon shoot us a, a monthly amount there's some tiers on there i think some have uh, a gift option that's the corporate cowboys podcast as well as uh cash app venmo um paypal keep this operation non-profit i think uh that in today's terms on today's terms is the best mode for approaching capitalism why because it revolves around investment it revolves around circulation circulating circulating the wealth like blood don't let that bitch clot because when there's a stroke then we strike (laughs) take it easy